everybody, welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro video editing tutorial. Before we go any further, here's what we're going to be creating. Ooh, that's so sweet, isn't it? Titles and lower thirds and all of this stuff with the new titler tool and the essential graphics panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, this is new to the April 2017 release of Adobe Premiere Pro. We're going to talk about how to use all of it. My video is going to herky-jerky on my screen next to me, so life is just good. Now, if you do enjoy this tutorial, make sure you leave a little like on it and also subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video editing Premiere Pro tutorial in the future. Let's jump into Premiere Pro and check out how we can make this uh, right here and right now. Now, we're actually going to make two different types of titles here. I'm just going to close the QuickTime player. We've got, of course, this one here and we got that other one, but let's talk about how to actually create them here in Premiere Pro. All right, so here in Premiere Pro, it's actually pretty simple. It's pretty easy. Um, now, Adobe does tell me that there is a new graphics workspace, but as you can see, no graphics workspace to be seen. Uh, it appears there's a titles workspace, but the only thing that that appears to be is it appears to be somewhat worthless because the whole graphics panel does not open in there. But I'll show you if you're not getting the graphics workspace, uh, maybe you are by the time you download and get this uh, version of uh, Premiere Pro, everything's just fine and dandy for you. It's really not that big of a deal. I'm still working in my normal workspace anyway. We do have this graphics option here, uh, but if we come up here under window, we have this panel here called Essential Graphics, and when we open that, we get this. I'm going to dock it over here on the side of uh, my Premiere Pro workspace. I'm going to just kind of squish it down a little bit, and I'm going to stretch out my timeline a little bit more, just something kind of like that. Cool. Now, over here in the Essential Graphics, we have a couple categories. Number one, we have Browse, and we have Edit. Now, Edit is for when we actually place graphics. We'll get to that later. For now, I want to take a look at Browse. Browse is really super cool because we can do a number of things here. We can immediately begin using a bunch of different templates that have been given to us by Adobe to place things like credits. I can open this up. Look at all these amazing different credits. These look like legit movie credits that you can add to the end of your films and videos. We have graphic overlays, which, you know, I mean, they're not like the nicest looking things. You can probably do much nicer, slicker, cleaner stuff in Photoshop and bring it over or build your own using the title or tool, which we'll get to in a little bit. But, you know, they're not all bad. There's some that are, that are pretty nice. And you know what? Maybe even one of the ones that I think is bad, you really love. And if that's the case, hey, to heck with my opinion, do what you think is good. We've got some great lower thirds here. So all these lower thirds, you're shooting a documentary. You want that one where the guy is that guy from that place who does that thing, and you can put the lower third and that shows that. We got some just standard slates that may be useful for you. Uh, we have some social media. Uh, you know, like, share, subscribe, and hey, by the way, make sure you do that to this video. Like it, share it, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for reminding me, Premier. And then titles. So we're going to work here with titles, and this is pretty cool. We'll go with this bold title here, and the way you use it is you just drag it out and you drop it on your timeline. Premiere does this loading motion graphics template thing. Give it a second. It'll it'll whip right through it. And once it's end up placing it, or once it does end up placing it here, we got 85%. Let's go. You can see we have just this object as if it's another video clip on our timeline. Now, if I scrub through this, you can see a number of things. As I scrub through, we have this animation that twists down and then text that bounces down below it. Pretty cool. Uh, how do we change that text, though? Because obviously we probably don't want it to say your title here in episode name. Well, we do this. We can do it a number of ways. But you can see up here now we've automatically switched to the edit section of Essential Graphics. So I can click on your title here and you can see I get, well, first of all, I get all these amazing text controls. So I can say, you know what? I don't want Bebas. I want, you know, Al Mac or any one of these typefaces. I actually do want to just leave it at what they have, but you can use any number of different options. You can change alignment, you can change color and size and angle, all kinds of really cool things there. Positioning. So the edit options give you a ton of features, but in this case, we want to keep things simple. We just want to change the words that are there. Well, enter the new text tool. Now, this is what you'll commonly hear referred to as like a titler or something like that. Um, it is just the type tool here in Premiere Pro. And if we select it, we can work here in our program monitor as if it were just working in like Photoshop or Illustrator with the text tool. So I can say, all right, I'm going to type the word Philadelphia. Voila, maybe I'll say comma PA, right? There we go, hit the escape key and it gets me out of the text field, commits my change, great. Uh, I can select the episode name block of text right up here in my edit mode, great. I can grab the text tool, I can just uh, highlight all of that text and down here I can say, let me just back all of this text out. Uh, I'll just say the city of brotherly love. 
period. There we go, escape to commit that change, and now all the animation is still there. So I have my title, I can just deselect with the uh, the edit uh, up here in the edit panel, I can hit my spacebar to preview it, and there we go. I've created a title that fast, that easy. Now to this title, I can apply different settings. I can, I can come over here to my effects, I could say, you know what, I want this to fade in, so I'll go like dissolve, I'll drag across dissolve here, and I'll stretch it out a little bit, and then at the end of the whole bit, I just want it to fade out. So I can just play through this, voila, it fades in, it goes through its thing as the video is panning, and then zip, it fades right out, and then we're into our film, right? Just like that. So that's all pretty cool. That's how you can quickly use one of the presets that's included here with this Premiere Pro April 2017 update. Really, really neat stuff. So it's super easy to edit them, really easy to change them. You can quickly jump from folder to folder just like that. And by the way, to delete one of these folders, what's nice is you can't just like select it and hit the delete key. You have to actually right click and choose delete or to move or to rename. Uh, that way you have to be very deliberate if you want to get rid of one of these things or drag one of them and drop it into another folder. I can't even drag and drop it. You'd have to right click and choose move and then you could just choose the new folder which you want to drop that folder of templates into. So it's really, really cool. It's really nice the way they've set this up. Um, and there's a lot of great resources for you, especially if you're just, you know, you're like, ah, get my basic lower third in there and it's going to load that motion graphics template just like that. And you come over here and voila, you got your second line is smaller and the main name right there. And it's just a very simple lower third. And just like that, you can create a lower third for any project you're working on in uh, Premiere Pro. So I just deleted that that chunk of lower third from my image. Now, let's talk about uh, a little bit more of a customized title. And this can also be used for lower thirds. It just depends on how you position the whole thing. Um, let's say we want to create a title that's custom for ourselves using these new shape tools and type tools here in a Premiere Pro. Oh, here's how we do it. So the shape tools are here underneath the pen tool. We've got this rectangle and ellipse tool. Pretty cool. And again, we can just come up here and drag on our program monitor as if we're just working on a, an image in Photoshop or Illustrator. Really, really neat. Uh, now, over here on my effect controls, and also, by the way, in the essential graphics panel under edit, I can start changing the appearance. So I could, like, select the fill color. I can say, you know what? I want to maybe get something that's a more saturated version of the reddish-orange color that's on the side of the building. All right, well, grab your eyedropper tool, select that color, and come over here to saturation, boost the saturation way up, and maybe change the brightness a little bit. There we go. We've got more of what you would expect to be a, a Philadelphia Flyers orange color. Great. And also over here in the edit panel, we have some align options. So we can perfectly align this to the center of our video frame, just like that. You can customize the scaling and even the opacity of it here. If we want to make it somewhat see-through, you can do something like that. It's all very, very easy to do. So let's just set this at, you know, whatever. We have 69%. Let's leave it there because that's just too good. Uh, we'll leave it at 69% opacity. And now we want to add some text to this as well. So we're going to go grab the type tool and we can just click anywhere and we'll type out the word Philadelphia. So let's go uh, Philadelphia. There we go. Escape. And now I can drag this text up above my, my colored box. Now, a couple things. There is this new layer model in uh, Premiere Pro. So if I say, you know what, I actually want the word Philadelphia to be beneath that colored box. Well, I got some layers up here. I can drag Philadelphia, drop it beneath that colored box. And there we have it. It's now beneath the colored box. I don't want that. I do want it to be above it. Uh, so now I'll select the Philadelphia text. I'm editing Philadelphia text and not the actual shape. And I can do something like, hey, you know what? I actually want to scale this upward. I want to make it quite a bit larger. Maybe we want to make it about that size. And I can click and drag it always with your black, your black arrow tool over here, your selection tool. You can just click an element and just drag it and drop it wherever you want. You can see, by the way, I should have mentioned this earlier, uh, down here in our timeline, when we started building this graph, Graphic, Premiere automatically created a new graphic object. That's what this, this bit is here. And I can stretch it out. And now this graphic will begin here at just past the six second mark and continue to just past the 10 second mark, right? So we create this sort of, you know, title that looks just like this. And everything looks just like we wanted. We can select the text again. You know, actually, I, I think I'm good with the text where it is. Um, but because we have this graphic object, we can do something as simple as uh, maybe we don't want to do a dissolve. Maybe we want to do a slide. And we want this guy to slide in at the beginning and then slide out at the end. So when the title appears, zip slides right in. 
and then when it gets to the end of it here, you'll see, whoop, there it goes, slides right out. So pretty cool, a lot of different things you can do, but like maybe we had here in our original title, we want to do some actual animation to this. We want the red box to drop down from the top, and then maybe the text to fade in or something. I don't know. How do we do that? Well, over here in the effect controls, we have our shape, and we have our text, and we are able to, as indicated by these little stopwatches, we can animate or, you know, add keyframes and tween between them uh, with a number of the different things. We could, for instance, tween the appearance. Maybe we want a stroke to appear, or maybe we want the color to fade from orange to black, or, you know, from orange to bright green, or whatever it may be. You can tween and adjust all sorts of different things. So first and foremost, let's let's make this so the orange box drops down from the top and we'll make it drop down and kind of bounce back into place. So we'll begin here with the shape. That's the shape 01 right there. I'm most interested in the transform options down here. So I'll open up a twirl down transform and I have scaling. First thing I'm gonna do is check off uniform scale because I just wanna play with the vertical scale. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the beginning of this video clip, so or this graphic clip. So with my playhead out here, I wanna make sure I have this V2 selected, right? Or whatever your track is, you wanna make sure you toggle on uh, that track like that. So when you hit the up arrow key, it's gonna move to the very first frame of that clip, right? So we're at the very first frame of that clip. Maybe I'll slide my program monitor over a little bit so we can get a little little bit more of our animation timeline here, right? And what we'll do is with vertical scale, I'm going to drop a keyframe here at the very beginning, and then I'll toggle out. Maybe we want this to take about a second. So let's take it out to right around seven seconds. We're just past seven seconds. In fact, I can just say 700 here, and it's going to take me to exactly seven seconds. And we'll hit the little add or remove keyframe button to add another keyframe, right? And what we'll do here is we'll set the vert vertical scale to like 110. So that's going to make it go a little bit past where we want it to be. These are vector shapes, so they're not going to get blurry. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, now, what I want to do is choose the previous keyframe button, and I'm going to set the vertical scale here to zero and hit the tab button to commit that. So what's gonna happen now is over the course of this second, you can see that as this slides out, we're also making our red box slide down. And in fact, the slide's a little distracting, so I'm gonna actually click on the slide down here in my timeline, hit the delete key to get rid of it. So you can see here what's gonna happen is over the course of that first second, we get our little box to slide down. Now, of course, we need it to sort of bounce back to 100% in the vertical scale. So make sure we have that shape selected. We want the bounce to be relatively quickly, so it's gonna hit its 100% percent uh, vertical scale right about there so we'll scroll a little past it we'll add another keyframe and then we'll just set the vertical scale to 100 there we go so what's going to happen here is it's going to scroll down and then back but it doesn't look very natural it doesn't look very like bouncy right it just looks very mechanical and, and not very good so i'm going to drag a selection over these three keyframes i'm going to right click and i'm going to set them to auto bezier or i could even go with like an ease out let's go with ease out and let's see here now when we do it it's just a much more smooth much more expected ba boom and in fact, if that animation is not fast enough for you, we can do something like select the two keyframes out here and just drag them back closer. And then we probably select the last keyframe there and just make the whole effect much faster. Blop, there you go. It just drops right down and bounces back into place. Perfect. So we got a great title. And by the way, we can make this title a lower third by just selecting the whole graphic object and selecting up here this little icon next to motion. And we can change the position of the entire object just by simply clicking and dragging it. So maybe we want this to be down here, or maybe we want this to be up in the top corner, something like that. Or maybe we have an exact X and Y. We can just scroll the X and Y here up in our effect controls, and we can move the whole thing very, very easily, just like we would expect. I'm going to undo this and move it back to the middle. Uh, but you can see it's going to be really easy to go in and move these objects around. And of course, using the uh, edit panel over here, we can go ahead and move any of the shapes wherever we want as well uh, by either clicking and dragging or using our X and Y coordinates. Now to fade the text in, we will probably want to do that as soon as the animation finishes in order, or maybe as soon as the animation gets to its 110% here on the vertical scale, right? So that's right there at that keyframe. So what we would do is we would scroll down, we would open up our text, the text is open, uh, we can open up transform and I'm interested here in opacity. Now what we need to do first is go back, well we can set a keyframe here. We'll set a keyframe and we're going to change the opacity to 0%. That's going to make our text invisible. It's at 0% opacity. And maybe between here and here, we want our text to fade in. So add a new keyframe and we can just hit this sort of reset uh, well yeah, there it is reset parameter option which is going to bring our text back to 100 percent so now we can see 
blip, and the text is going to fade right in. So the box drops down, the text fades right in. So it's super easy to do this stuff. We can just drag over this. We can right click, set it to auto bezier to make it a little smoother and just watch it. Bam. There we go. And just like that, it looks great. And then when we get to the end of the life of the title, it's going to slide right off the screen just like that. So I know this is a little full of talking and a pretty in depth, but I think there's a lot of good information that needs to be covered with regard to these new options here in Premiere Pro. So I'm just gonna zoom out here on my timeline. We can see we've got a very, very simple little uh, couple videos, couple graphic clips here. And if I just scrub through once more, we can see the built-in stock title animates down, looks great, it's gonna fade away, and then just as easily we can create our own, well maybe not just as easily because it did take a little bit more time, but very easily using those new tools in Premiere Pro, we can create our own titles, we can create our own lower thirds, and the sky is the limit. Now I should also mention, you can create titles and uh, templates and save templates, you can save those templates here in Premiere Pro using the Essential Graphics tab, uh, Essential Graphics panel I should say, but more importantly and more more powerfully, you can also create these lower thirds and titles and whatnot in After Effects. So you can really expand the possibility of things you can create and you can set the parameters that are editable in Premiere Pro so you can build it in After Effects, save it to like your Creative Cloud library, import it, you can also save it right on your hard drive, import it here into Premiere Pro using the Essential Graphics panel and use those templates that you yourself have created and set parameters and said, look, you can edit this text and edit that text and edit the color of that object or that object or whatever. The great thing about that is you can create templates you yourself can use or you can create templates that you give away for free or that you sell. So the sky's really the limit. There's a lot of really, really cool stuff you can do with Essential Graphics, uh, but that's going to be it for this one. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you hit the little like button. Subscribe to my channel so you never miss another one of these video editing or Premiere Pro tutorials in the future. I know I talk fast. Some people complain about it in the comments. I'm really sorry, guys. I'm working on it. Uh, but it is also just kind of, I don't know, I fall into this groove and I start bam, 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 bam. My mind is moving so fast and I'm trying to get everything out before I move on to the next thing. I'm pretty sure I'm ADD. What? Is that something over there? No, I'm kidding. Uh, but that's going to be it for this one. That was really bad. I'm aware of that. For working with the new titler in Adobe Premiere Pro, the titler and the essential graphics panel, I should say, in Premiere Pro, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.